So I feel like these two players um, are actually the key to Revenant, to be honest. Yeah. And as you said, right, and as everybody said here, SK Rossi with his experiences, it's really underplayed sometimes. Like, just simply sharing his experiences actually helps a lot in terms of perspective. And I feel like that's what a region like SA is actually lacking in. And, I think you know, his whole career yeah. is just to destroy every single OCE team's hope. I think <laughs> every single qualifier... Uh, I just hope their stomach is strong enough to live in Jakarta. <laughs> Ayam get pre. Yeah. Ayam get pre bang. Dude, it's, it's a factor that no one really thinks about. Yeah. But if you think about it, you recall last year, some of the, or was it two years ago, some of the European players in Turkey got hospitalized. Wait, real? I mean, let's be real here. The hype is because of the return of the Korean jet back yeah, to the state. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people want that because I think uh, since Valorant what, came out, like I think what, in 2020, 2021, everyone's talking about the Korean jet. He was the original Korean jet. Yeah. I remember the entire conversation that happened in rooms and with the players as well, where we were like, make sure you do not eat this. I know Hyderabad <laughs> is famous for his biryani, but make sure you don't eat, eat this, at least until you're done with your matches. Yeah. yeah. I, say, yeah. I saw one restaurant, it was either in Korea or Japan, they have a spice chart. Yeah. Right? Uh, Korea or Japan was like at number one, and then it scales up to 10. And at number 10, it's just an Indonesian flag. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want you guys to be careful. If you hear people here say it's spicy, it's spicy. Uh, the format, right? Let's start with the format first, and then we'll put the teams in the brackets over there. Sure. Uh, the format's a little controversial. A lot of people don't see eye to eye with it. Uh, and let me put it out just for people who still don't know yet about it. Um, basically, every team's been put in a certain bracket where the first game, the opening game, is between SPG and Revenant, and then the follow-up game be after that. Full now, sense and Oblivion. Yeah. So, so the first bracket is uh, yeah, Full Sense and Oblivion Force. So, what exactly for the people who don't know is if you go to the previous ascension and you look at the finishes of the regions, Korea, South Asia, Thailand, uh, no, forgive me, not yeah, Thailand and um, Hong Kong, Taiwan finished in the bottom four. They were in the fifth to eighth position hence they are in the first bracket and they'll be playing that uh, games they'll be playing those games and then you have your top two regions which of course was singapore and uh, japan who've got their own bracket who will be facing off against the winner of these and then you've got your you know uh, third and fourth fifth and sixth place third and fourth i mean the third and fourth region which has been put into those brackets so open floor what do you guys think about this should the previous ascension uh, placement have affected this year's, you know, place uh, brackets. What do you guys think? Mm. Hard to say. Yeah. I mean, like, I think, uh, I think we had this conversation before. I think it happened before about uh, a team being able to win a Masters or was it lock in or kick off, giving another slot. Yeah. Mm. Like that was something that has been done before. I never thought that we would reach a point where it would reach like. Oh, based on your country's placing last year should affect this year's for me. I kind of disagree with that format. Mm -hmm. It's not very fair because every it's a whole new team playing this year, a whole new lineup. Why is it that last year's performance would affect this year? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sleepy? Yeah, but to give it another POV though, I think it's also from a perspective of the whole of Ascension, it's kind of like a celebration of the up-and-coming talent here in the region, right? So... Uh, I see the merit. I see the reasoning why they should place it that way. Um, but I do kind of have a similar sentiment to Tash that's kind of unfair for the teams that are fighting today. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's kind of inevitable, you know. Like it, if you do it randomly, it's just it just takes away that factor of um, um, the idea of ascension. The idea right? of ascension, yeah, and, and also the merit of the teams before, right? And take like take like Boom for example. They mm -hmm. did place. Kind of okay last year, so that kind of carried forward to this year. So I see the merit in that. But for these other newer um, teams, teams that we haven't really heard of before, maybe uh, like I'm kind of surprised of Riddle Order. I I've been following them because of their branding, yeah. But happy to see that they're actually competing pretty well as well and making it here. Mm -hmm. But they got a slot for free basically yeah, yeah, yeah. last year. Uh, it was the scars that right. kind of carried the whole of the region, right? So there's two sides to this, uh, but I'm leaning towards, uh, you know, uh, there should be another way to draw these brackets instead of having to carry everything forward from last year. 
Mamba, you and I come from the same region. We've seen our, uh, you know, unfortunate instances of orangutan not doing well. And it's it's unfortunately their mistakes that's costing Revenant right now playing against probably one of the favorites in the opening game of Ascension. Do you think, does that make you feel a little like, you know, it is unfair to... Not, I mean, okay, like there's two ways to look at it, right? One, of, of course, uh, what Sleepy and Tash had to say. The other is Ascension essentially is where most of the teams want to ascend to the next level, right? And if you're really aiming towards that, then uh, at least mentally, right? And maybe to cope. Shouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter who you're Shouldn't playing matter, against. Shouldn't matter, yeah. Yeah, um, you it, do whatever. I get it, look, I get it. It's, it's upsetting. I understand that it's not nice. It's not, it's not so nice as a fan. But at the end of the day, if you want your team, if you want your region to do well, then mentally you just have to check yourself out of it because the rules are defined. Uh, am I a fan of it? Not really. But in, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm not somebody who would probably like dwell on it too much. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, it is what it is. Take it to the chin and move on. I, yeah, wouldn't, and I wouldn't dwell on it too much. If I may backtrack a little bit, I did say that Riddle Order kind of earned the spot for free, yeah. but that's not true as well, right? They did fight for it. They yeah. placed uh, at the top of the region. So yeah, I, I agree with Mamba. Like it's it's it, it doesn't matter as much, I feel. Um, in terms of the bracket and, and the format, you just got to play to win. Um, and if you're not ready for these types of formats and brackets and you see these as a surprise, then I don't think you're ready to ascend yet. And, and just yeah. to add, right, maybe you'd make it to the, the next bracket, maybe the upper bracket semifinals yeah. and then mm-hmm. crash. What's the point? Right? Like, yeah. Are you really exactly. making it? So, yeah, but you know yeah. what? I think we should really ask the player who's yeah. 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 Like, 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 like waiting. quiet was, right now. <laughs> I've been waiting to say, yeah, what you as a player, yeah. what do you feel like? If you were in this bracket, maybe let's say you were in any of those teams in the first bracket, mm. how would you feel? Would you feel like you were being treated unfairly because of somebody else's performance last year? Well, in my opinion, it's like at the end of the day, everyone's goal there is to win the whole tournament. Like it, they don't care if they come last or like second last it's still losing right it, like no one's there to lose right it doesn't yeah. everyone wants to win so if you have to make that that like extra little push from the beginning i don't think it's that big of a deal like if you can't make that little push you're never going to win it anyway you know like i'm just very happy that they adjusted the bracket from what it was at the beginning of this year because if you remember they actually released it and it was a, like a single elite yeah, 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 which one. was in Ooh, my opinion that. is so much worse than what it is now like <laughs> yeah. if it was that it's like you could play one game you just go, you're gone yeah like no, you'd no. all that work for a year you play one beer three you're out like <laughs> yeah, no one wants to see that it's, it's, it's just not fun yeah See, that i, I have had a very harsh opinion about sorry <laughs> <laughs> i have yeah. a view on this too because i think like it, you might seem you you might look at it as a disadvantage, but usually getting warmed up in another city um, that yeah. is not your home, I think, is very underrated in these types of tournaments. I agree with you. So these two, these four teams that get to play first, um, not at their home, get to get used to that. You know, uh, mm. vibes of the new city. They have to adjust to the new settings, the the, the, the new monitors, mouse, um, yep. the the table, the the chairs, like everything else outside of the game also matters and i feel like this might actually give them the advantage so mm. these yeah. teams that don't get to play at the start actually might have to be careful mm-hmm. especially riddle order and disguised um maybe not so much for disguised because they're they're like so close to to jakarta yeah these players are probably uh they, they probably have been here quite a lot so it doesn't matter as much but yeah for Riddle order it might be a tough challenge there's, yeah. there's one thing that might be a little bit of a disadvantage because last ascension, I don't know how widely known this is, but there was a lot of tech issues. Oh yeah, oh, there yeah. was so <laughs> many tech, tech issues for the first like two or three days. Like we had to play at like three a.m. our first match because yeah, everything delayed and delayed and delayed. So you could argue that the people that are playing on that first day in the in the the what is it called the up around one right? Yeah, mm. they have to go through those problems if they are like yeah. if there's problems and those teams that are playing the next day hopefully it will be solved by them and there's not much a play you just got to deal with that and it's like it's it's quite it like yeah there's not much you can do you just got to cop it and just go with it but it's yeah. it's quite it's demoralizing when it, the, you lose potentially by something that's just completely out of your 
control. Like, mm. and that's definitely something that can happen in these first round games, especially when they have to change the location like relatively yeah. last minute. Like, yeah. it's really hard. At least Indonesia has had these lands like before with like ML and other games, right? Like, right. they're pretty that's familiar right. with like hosting these big events. So, I'm hopeful that it's going to be smooth, but you really never know. And we start off with our um, Hong Kong Vietnam. Uh, forgive me, Hong Kong Taiwan representative, which is Oblivion Force, uh, who were extremely good in their group stages. They went unbeaten in split two as well. They were choking in playoffs, but they managed to squeeze through one team, which was, of course, the representative last year. Uh, anybody's got anything on them? Because I re really didn't watch as much of Oblivion Force, but are we looking at a similar finish for uh, HKDW this, this time as well? Or can we see something different? What do you guys think? Hmm. I don't Honestly, know too much about um, the I have to be honest too. Yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> such a watch I think much. it's it's such a it's such a segregated region, especially yeah. you know, regions that don't have uh broadcast in English. It's a little bit harder mm. for outsiders to watch, especially coming from I'm not sure what language uh the region speaks. But, you know, it's it's just one of those teams, like for me, I don't really actively follow a lot of different teams, mm -hmm. but I'm not hearing those echoes or at least that conversation coming through from a lot of different players uh, about this team as well. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, when Primi first got picked up by Talon, everyone was excited. Yeah. I've never heard of Primi, but the only reason why I heard of Primi was because every single pro player in the region was talking about them. Mm -hmm. But for Oblivion Force, it's a team that, I don't know if people even scream with them or it's a bit more quiet because uh, they're not English speaking. So, yeah. yeah. All right. One might yeah. even say we're all oblivious to it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Good let's, one. Let's, 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 let's move on. Sorry, you're oblivion first if anybody's watching this. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, immediate jump up to the other side of the planet. We've got one of the favorites, Boom Esports. Uh, mm. Incredibly, incredibly powerful extremely dominant in their region went completely unbeaten except for their matches against alter ego their rivals yeah. sleepy nobody better than you to start it off tell me about them sure yeah as i said i think boom has always been the powerhouse here in indonesia it's also it's a good thing because they're around and consistent mm -hmm. but it's also a bad thing because we don't see a lot of competition here right so this might be like two sides of the coin either they are that strong regionally or it's just that nobody else can catch up to them, um, which is kind of untrue because the other teams did give them a run for their money. Mm -hmm. um, they did have to fight quite uh, hard um, at, at the later stages of the um, Indonesian split two finals. Yeah. Um, but one problem that I never see Boom having is choking in a grand finals on land on their home crowd. Oh, yeah. That, so that I feel is... like... Yeah, I feel like this this venue change to Indonesia is actually a <laughs> massive advantage to Boom. Mm -hmm. I know they're disappointed because they already they were already planning like, oh, I'm gonna go to Japan, I'm gonna go and hang out here, there, eat their food <laughs> and stuff. But look, if it takes not going to Japan to win Ascension, I'd say it's worth it, and I think they just gotta make the most of it. I right. mean, if they win it, they'll probably go there next year anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. It's just a detour, right? So whatever. Exactly. Um, and, and the other thing about Boom is that they, they've always um, strived to maximize their team's potential. And this time around, they brought Zesbu in, mm -hmm. um, swapping around some of the players. Um, some of them are still here uh, from last year's um, attendance at Ascension. So that's another advantage. I yeah, think. they they've have the experience. There. Yeah. They yeah. have the experience. They've yeah. met all these probably the majority of the other players from the other teams mm -hmm. and they kind of have uh, a great support system as well in their coaching I, I think at this point they have three coaches slash analysts so yeah they do they are primed to get this right i'll be bummed if they can't make it to at least top four so that they get to greet their home crowd mm -hmm. which fingers crossed i hope they do make it just so you know the indonesian crowd just don't get disappointed because they come on the 27th of september and hey where's boom That'd be awkward. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't think we're going to have to be worried about that. I think they're going to make it at least a top four. Um, and like what said, they might even run away with this. Looking at Boom Esports, where do you think they might finish this time? What? I think I think they're going to win the whole thing. Like, I'm... <laughs> I'd say they're probably the favorite for me. Because even look at last year. smile on Sleepy's face. He's just like, <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah. The only teams that were close to beating 
lead last year was D plus that did beat them in the group stage. Mm -hmm. And then it was boom in the playoffs. It was what? Yeah. It went into OT and then a 13, 10, 13, 10. I mean, yeah, an OT cute. is a bleed curse, not a boom curse. It was <laughs> yeah, two different true. things. <laughs> but the fact that they could bring it that close to the team that absolutely like destroyed scars in the grand yeah, final. Yeah. On, his, on the stage with them having Escari, like it, it's, I think that if the crowd is on their side, they probably win that series and mm -hmm. they probably beat scars because scars is heavily under underperformed in the grand final yeah. and this boom is definitely stronger than last year's boom like mm. we've screamed against them and they've played they're playing very 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 good yeah yeah and uh, i just wanted to add one thing the mm. boom i feel like i say a lot um i say this as to a lot of teams but boom is the definition of a slow starter um like mm. two other players i feel are very prone to this uh famous and berserks Mm. They have a lot of hype around them, um, and we know that they're super strong as individuals, but if they cannot get it started yeah. um, at the start of the series, it's kind of a nightmare to deal with, to be honest. And I'm sure Coach Miao from Boom have been... I don't know if, they're, if they also bang desks around here, but <laughs> I feel like they're doing a lot of that or it's equivalent because mm. of that. So I'd love to see Boom just have a hot start and just... You know, don't give us that worry unnecessarily. You know, <laughs> just yeah. take it away, just win. Yeah. Um, because we know you can, and they should do it at their home crowd. So, this, I just want to see that. Is this an Indonesian thing? Because I think we see it on the Pacific <laughs> stage as well sometimes. Honestly, it might be true. Uh, we don't know, right? And as I said, in Indonesia, we just don't have a lot of. It's tough to say because we do see a lot of strong individuals, but as a team, it just doesn't seem to be a a solid foundation mm. here. So boom, obviously have been around for forever. Uh, and I, you got to think that by now they figured it out, right? Yeah. They've probably gotten a hang of the formula to perform well on stage. So I just want to see them actually show that where it matters the most. And this is um, the, 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 the place to show it. Otherwise yeah. you're going to have to wait another year. And I don't think they're going to be in favor of that. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, one thing that we need to know about boom is that boom has been home to so many legends. Like I oh, think yes. before anyone goes toward that tier one or goes toward those bigger you're stages, actually right. at one point they would have been in boom. You're e actually right. Oh, I mean, we saw it, you know, uh, blaze King. I think it was mind freak and mind freak forsaken. Yeah. Uh, they were Elmi all. Moore, yeah, Elmi uh, Moore was on there as well. Uh, yeah. Lip Jider. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, Flip's Jider, they're all going. Off, yeah, <laughs> yeah, from that, from the health, which shows that the foundation that Boom has yeah. set for these players to improve them and grow them is definitely there. I remember Boom struggled a little bit because uh, I think it was uh, Blaze King had to leave going to yeah. Global mm -hmm. Esports. I think they did struggle for a little while trying to find that replacement. I'm so glad they got Zesbu because, yeah. you know, as you mentioned before, Zesbu might just be that X factor. He's a player that's been playing in Indonesia for quite some time for yeah. several teams. He's a, a player that's played in NYSG as well. And I think he has that idea, that fundamental, that idea, that experience of playing in so many different regions, which mm -hmm. could really, really help uh, the fundamentals or at the, the strength of a team to grow rather than just being really good shot, you know? Mm. Fair enough. And to add to it, right? Uh, uh, especially on Zespu, I have a little bit of low to drop. I remember right. seeing him for the first time when he was 15, I guess. He was playing Battlefield 4 for BF Not. <laughs> I used to play for an Ind Indonesian team called BDS, uh, BDGS. Binding Wait, Geek. real? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, there, there was this player called Sompluck. I don't know if you've heard of him, Sleepy, yes, but yes. I absolutely agree with you on having players who are individually absolute outliers, skilled, yep. incredibly skilled, but. As a unit, sometimes it does get a little difficult, but uh, Zensbu, even though he's just 24, has tons of experience behind him, and I agree. I think Boom is one of those teams that I would put my money on and be like, you know what, they can absolutely walk away with this. And I think everyone would agree that Zensbu just has to be that X factor, for, X factor for the team. But yeah, seeing him go from a 15-year-old kid just running around in Battlefield 4 to this <laughs> and obviously be an absolute legend of the game, it's an incredible ride. It's an yeah. incredible ride to see and they have a famous as well, which he's an absolute demon on land. Like oh, uh, last yeah. ascension, he was he was a problem. Like <laughs> missing yes. him, he that guy has so much confidence. He's like he is he's not afraid. Like I feel like that guy can go up against anyone. And like, he sh he for me personally, I think he should have been in franchising a long time ago. But yeah, I agree with you. He's on that level for sure. Yeah, I think the first time I saw him was Persija. Uh, Persija yeah, Esports, e uh, yeah, yeah, back when I did uh, APAC uh, in mm -hmm. the day, and I thought to myself, why is this guy <laughs> not going further with his team? Because 
he is one talented mf'er i'm sorry if that was too <laughs> like, 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 like he, he is insane and, i think you know, his whole career yeah is just to destroy every single oce team's hope i think every <laughs> single qualifier what like every iteration i think it was order it was bonkers and uh, like i think it was uh like one other i think order the other time they went over every single time they lose the famous and we get sent back home every single time so i think Ooh. it's just his life goal to send oce home so uh, hopefully we can dodge a boom this time <laughs> but who knows uh, I mean, I, I think you're gonna, you know, dodge them until the upper bracket final. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Upper finals is yeah, where they're gonna meet. Upper yeah, final, yeah, then. Yeah, it's yeah. GFT safe for a bit, but that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of them, let's uh, shift over to the uh, OC region. We've got an anomaly, which kind of I don't think a lot of people expected. But what did you know? Uh, you know, back end because you pretty much knew all the players on all the teams. Did you yep. expect JFT to do what they did and take out bonkers? Well, I honestly wait. Did I didn't think JFT actually beat Bunkers, right? I think it was a what was it? AIC. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was AIC. Them, right? It was AIC. Because yeah. with yeah. when I was in Bunkers as well, we always had like a rival rivalry with Nerd Punt, which is now AIC, and it was always kind of like close games. Mm. So going into it, I always thought this year if they got matched up AIC versus Bunkers, I could see AIC beating them because their sole purpose is to anti strat. And mm. really like beat Bunkers. Like that was their number one target, you know? While Bunkers was just has to fight with everyone, AIC just focused on them. And because they knocked them down after that, and I noticed that because JFT is like not really like I don't think it was anyone really predicted them to to win the whole thing, but they're definitely like experienced players and they've been around for ages. Like uh Andy was in China for quite a while, he did really good. Yeah. Uh Kiss is like he's kind of like this absolute ranked demon. Like that guy has like a huge ego and his confidence is massive. And he he like, but the thing is he backs it up in the server, which is the the thing that matters, right? Mm. And the the rest of them, it's like Icana, he's a player that's been around for a long time. Like he's always been like pretty much in maybe the top four, top five, never really breaking into like winning tournaments, but always being a top player, you know? Yeah. So I'd say no one could really predict them to win it, but after Bunkers got eliminated, I think like I I probably had them to, to beat AIC in the grand final. Wait, no but... way you said that. Because <laughs> everyone no, 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 listen, listen. Everyone was telling me that in Australia when uh when JJH got eliminated, everyone was looking at focus. Yeah, focus. Come up on yeah. top. Yeah. So, you know, I had my eye up on focus and then suddenly they got eliminated at third place. And everyone was telling me when GFT won uh AIC, everyone was saying to me, Do you guys know that JFT is just a pub team? They're just a ranked team that, you know, just like, you know, messing around and suddenly made, yeah. made it to to ascension. And I am shocked to hear this. Like, what is going on there? Can you explain okay, this so phenomenon? The thing with like JFT, they I wouldn't call them a pug team. Like they definitely they practice, right? They don't they yeah, don't just obviously. rock up. Yeah. But their confidence is like on another level. Like they don't care who they're versing. Like they could go up against bunkers and they'd be confident. Like they they because they have that like I don't care mindset, it makes them like unpredictable. You know, That's you can't scary. prepare for them. And in my opinion, teams like Focus and AIC is a team that is good at preparing against teams that are predictable. But when you verse a team like J like a ah like uh jft where they're yeah. running the the broken iso every single map <laughs> the entire qualifier and this like andy that was playing it is just absolutely killing everyone and no one had an answer to that and it was it made them have a big advantage because they just adapted right because they yeah. don't have like like all like aic focus bunkers they've been running these comps like practicing really hard for like two months mm -hmm. prior so they're not, they're not going to switch to an iso just because it's strong at the moment but jft comes in they don't really care they oh this this agent's broken we can see that we're sharp we're just going to go in and kill everyone and they did like you look at the statistics and it's actually incredible how many how much impact that iso had and yeah. i i feel like they're gonna do the same thing in ascension as long as they don't overthink it and like like start this the mental of like oh wait we have to start practicing to mm. win and they they change the, they shift their mindset from this oh we don't care we're just a pug team like there's no pressure to like putting the pressure on themselves oh we have to do everything correctly that's when they're gonna crumble because that's not who they are right they're this pug team i wouldn't call them a pug team but they're like this free-flowing team i'd like mm. to say you where, know it's giving yeah. it's giving paper x when they used yeah. to say um how can people predict as well we don't even know what we're exactly. doing type of vibe. <laughs> yeah i'd say do it's you, very similar it's like the ascension do, paper x do you think they'll do as well as you guys did last year or better or worse I think they can 
it's the, it's the thing. I think it's it's so it's so it's so on them and how they are going to like approach the tournament. I feel like if they're in their own heads, they're probably gonna not win a game. But if they play with confidence and they believe in themselves and they don't like put the pressure on themselves, they could they could go deep. They mm -hmm. they could do better than we did last year. Like anything's possible. Right. Like, they're very the diplomatic. Sure. What? <laughs> very <laughs> PR team answer. I, yeah. I know you're trying to say I'm the best. Our team's the best, <laughs> which I respect, but I understand. And <laughs> honestly, here's the thing about OCE, right? They don't get. I don't know what it's like actually. Like nowadays, they don't get a lot of practice with all these other teams mm, uh, yeah. in this region, right? Yeah, none, pretty much. None. There you go. So this is the surprise factor that I think they have to play to their advantage. Like you yep. said, if they do actually play like the way they did, uh, like the way you described them did. Uh, play like they don't care. Uh, play like all these wonky, crazy ass comps, like an ISO or yeah. I don't know if Vice is actually going to be played at Ascension. It should be. Uh, I, I think, think it, it is. It might be. Yeah. That could be an interesting angle yeah. as well. So these kinds of surprises are always welcome, and I feel like Valorant at a top level, they've kind of stagnated at some point, and. We only see like a handful of surprises, right? But mm. these yeah. year two tournaments are where I think all these different fun ideas can be implemented and still work. So uh, a team like OCE is, I think, very primed to pull off something like that. And I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that. You've got uh, a, a one person show kind of that actually did carry the team, uh, at least according to the stats. But Riddle, as you mentioned, uh, mm. Sleepy. It was pretty clearly the, you know, the Soldom show for them, at least. He was out in front by any distance. One of their, he was their best player. He did really well almost in every series he played. And even today, I think if you go and ask every pro in the VCT, they say, who's the Korean jet? It is Soldom. Soldom. He Soldom, is yeah. the Korean yeah. jet and he still carries that. He's doing that right now. What do we think about Riddle uh, coming out? Because I'm pretty sure Fennel, after that split one, everybody was like, oh, okay, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, Fennel could actually, you know, blow it out of the park. But then here comes Riddle and they just turn it up. Can I start? Yeah, go on. All right. So I have a lot of conversations with local players about their scrims and how they play. And everyone's just hyping up. Uh, you know, Riddle. And I think for a long time, everyone will be like, oh, China region, not as strong. Uh, one team looks really strong in Japan, but as soon as they leave Japan, they look, uh, they don't look as strong anymore. But no one's really said that about, uh, you know, Riddle order because mm. of Seal Dub is number one. And number two, because uh, when they go to talk about scrims and stuff, the team has been really set to play around Seal Dub. Yeah. And yeah, because when you have that that really good setup to really enable your best players, he's just able to pop off and pick off hits. And I think that's the reason why everyone has their eye on Riddle order as well. That's why it looks really, really terrifying. Mm. So I think for every single team, the only thing that's going on their hit right, right now is how can we shut down Seol Dam? How can we stop his team from being able to play with him? Now, especially with the addition of Vice into the game, with her her wall that comes that comes through, it, it can kind of isolate, right? Yeah. But if the setup has been done well, maybe three a flash that gets three people in back sight, he's still gonna be able to get the sight for his team uh, as the wall goes down. So that is something yeah. very very terrifying. Yeah, Mama. Any thoughts about how I think even Texture said this, you know, recently in the Pacific, they asked him who mm -hmm. is the you know Korean jet, even though he's on top of the world right now, he still feels like Soldom is the Korean jet and we had texture in global esports for a while as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, unfortunately couldn't win anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what do you think about a riddle? Because Japan has been an extremely strong region. Last year it was Scars. And this time Scars, even though they had an international roster, they had takes, they had Yoshi, they had multiple people. This time Riddle came out of nowhere with just one man pushing through. What do you feel about him? First of all, congratulations on making it to Global Esports. Second of all, uh, when's that podcast coming out where I asked the question, why were you hired? And third, getting back to uh, Riddle. Um, I, look, I, I feel like as, as much as one man can push the entire team through, I don't think that works at higher levels because there's always a chance that if either the player doesn't pop off or if there's a team that can isolate him, counter him, maybe find, find holes in, the, in their attack, defense, whatever it is, right? It doesn't matter. But I wouldn't want a team... Or I wouldn't want any team, as a matter of fact, to depend on one player so much. We've seen how many ways it can go wrong in. And um, as strong as they look on paper, I still feel they have a lot to prove, especially mm. over here. And uh, only time will tell us. Only time will tell if 
Cyril Dam is able to push them through. But there will there will be a day. There will be a day where he might not be able to do that. So yeah. I think as as hype as they look, they have bigger problems to deal with if they don't change their perception on how mm. they play. I mean, let's be real here. The hype is because of the return of the Korean jet yeah. back to the state. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people want that because I think since Valorant were, came out, like I think what, like 2020, 2021, everyone's talking about the Korean jet. He was the original Korean jet. Yeah. Especially I, I don't think they'd well. actually be able to go that deep and they might, if they make it top four, amazing. If But I, I think I still think it's a little dicey because the pressure will eventually get to them because no matter who you are, eventually the pressure does get you unless you're an absolute exception of a player. Yeah. And this format will definitely punish a player that if, if you're relying on one guy and he has one off day, like yeah, that's you in the lower yeah. bracket, yeah. you have two off days, you're out. Like if your team isn't there to carry that weight, like it's a, it's a difficult tournament. Mm. You know, mm. I think Lakia said something during his stream mm. about shooting. And, you know, he said something like, it looks so easy, right? Shooting hits. But we couldn't do that last year at Ascension. Yeah. It was so hard to shoot hits. And, you know, this yeah. comes back to your sentiment, what about being in their own heads like could this be a factor or a problem yeah. coming in for SPG because I think if we were to really look at the Korean teams before mm. one of the biggest problems coming in from Korean teams is their mental because once the mental tilt hits it's so apparent you can see oh, yeah. it in their faces when they play yeah uh, there is a very clear you know uh, contention of the fact that this has been the year for the Koreans right they won a master's They've been at the top, five different, of course, the finals for Gen G. They won the Pacific as well, stage two. Uh, Sleepy, do you think that might be a pushing factor of pressure for these Koreans to perform as well? Or is it a motivational factor? What do you think that might be? I think in a bit of a more practical sense, like the fact that the Korean teams have been performing well at the top, Mm -hmm. um, namely in Pacific and also at Master Shanghai with Gen.G. I think it really helps the other teams in the area because if they can secure scrims against these teams, that's that's what matters, I feel. Mm -hmm. Like, these practices are very underrated, right? Because I guess it's not really underrated. People do, do, do like, scrim bucks a lot. Like, oh, you won against this team, you won against that team. That That is an indication of your performance, which I hope is the case for... Uh, some of these teams, especially if you are a Korean team, definitely there is a pressure on you. Like, hey, your big brothers at a, uh, at, a, at Pacific have done so well. Why can't you do that here? Mm. Um, and I feel like it just have to be um, a very practical thing. Uh, you just get a look at these teams. They're doing really well at the top. Why not we make use of that? Let's scrim them more. Let's learn as much as we can from them before we fly to Jakarta, mm -hmm. which is going to be another problem. Uh, I just hope their stomach is strong enough to live in Jakarta. <laughs> I am get pre no, yeah. I am get pre bang. <laughs> Dude, it's it's a factor that no one really thinks about. Yeah. But if you think about it, you recall last year, some of the or was it two years ago, some of the European players in Turkey got hospitalized. Wait, real? Yeah, I think it was artists. Um, they they ate something in Turkey and they got hospitalized. Oh, this is, yeah, I think that that's like a factor, you know. You know, if, if yeah, you know, by any chance any team wants to face off, hey guys, you know what? Like, this is a really good, you know, street food. <laughs> yes, you know, joint uh, here. How about I take you there? You know, let's let's have a nice little dinner together. Yeah, it's on me. It's on me. Yeah? It I, might I, be a strategy. It <laughs> might be a strategy. I, I I'm remember not telling anything. Yeah. Hyderabad yeah. land that happened in India, right? Um, the, the GXR. <laughs> GXR. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I. I remember the entire conversation that happened in rooms and with the players as well, where we were like, make sure you do not eat this. I know Hyderabad <laughs> is famous for its biryani, but make sure you don't eat, eat this, at least until you're done with your matches. Yeah. Because you yeah. never know. Um, yeah. There are some places even I wouldn't eat at, even though I, I would love to. <laughs> but uh, it's not even about hygiene. It's just literally about making sure that, imagine I'm the host of the event, right? There's only one host. So maybe you're, you're a right. customer and, and you, you have your duo and you go out and eat and you're, you're feeling sick doesn't feel nice. So um, yeah. th there are certain things that you absolutely have to avoid. And I, I remember giving, giving out an SOP to teams. Like, don't do this. <laughs> Just absolutely avoid this. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we got it handled. So don't yeah. worry. I'm not trying to scare any Koreans <laughs> or Japanese or anyone else from Jakarta, outside of Jakarta. We have a lot of great food. 
and if anything, it might become a distraction. So just be careful not to <laughs> get enough. too indulged in all of uh, the, the culinary delight. I mean, I'm more worried about the spice. I mean, Indonesian food is spicy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I saw one restaurant. It was either in Korea or Japan. They have a spice chart. Yeah. Right? Uh, Korea or Japan was like at number one, and then it scales up to 10. And at number 10, it's just an Indonesian flag. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want you guys to be careful. If you hear people here say it's spicy, it's spicy. So mm. don't take any risks. Right. Okay. There is one thing I do yeah. want to ask you what, and uh, it's uh, SPG uh, in their you know entire season so far, in the split two at least. They've shown multiple different uh, comps for multiple different maps against mm -hmm. different teams. Like, for example, they played off, I think, against it was... Um, just give me a second. Yeah, they played off against Nongshim, who was, of course, in the finals. They played against them uh, with an ISO and Yoru on a scent, which is very interesting. And then they turned things up uh, towards the end, where they played that on Haven as well. They brought in the Neon for the first time in the entire playoffs after that as well. And between that, they also showed three different comms on Abyss, having a Breach in Gecko, had one with Fade, they have a Deadlock Cypher on Sunset with a Fade for some reason. So it's all over the place. They're very, very spread out in terms of it. Do you think this is a good thing or a bad thing for a team to have multiple different comps? Like, because you're not able to practice one particular thing perfectly. Well, the fact that they're doing that, and like you said, they were undefeated, right? So it's working for them. It shows that they're a very adaptable team and they can change their comps. They probably don't, they probably have multiple comps for multiple maps and they probably practice it depending on the play style of the, like the opposition, right? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a good thing to have. Like if the fact, if it was a team that was doing that and they were losing, I'd say it's a bad thing. Just stick to the basics and just master that. But it seems like they've mastered the basics and now they're going on to like what the, like the, the VCT sort of teams do and mm -hmm. they can, they can run multiple comps and like on the fly. Like sometimes they just, yeah. change it because they feel like it and it's they can make it work like i, I know paper x sometimes does that she's like oh i want to play raise this map and he just changes yeah. it even though they've never like he's not meant to be on it and they just change it like why not and the teams that can do that like if it's even part of the mental game like let's say they're, they're going up someone that's like watched all their vods they watched their game that was just yesterday and they're, they're prepping for bind or something mm -hmm. and they're getting into the server they get to the agent screen and they're running a completely different thing all those notes all that stuff just out the window like yeah. That that hits you like oh shit like they know yeah. everything about us and we know nothing like they could play completely different so in my opinion that the fact that they're making it work is very scary.